Repent and believe in the Gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is Friday, the 8th of April, 2022, fifth week of Lent. Participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Catherine Murohiwa, celebrating her golden birthday today. From Kanye Botswana, takes for us the first reading. Alvin Davis Mutembei from Nairobi, Kenya, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father John Peter Bebele from Giboko, Nigeria. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord. And in your goodness, set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading. The Lord is with me as a dread warrior. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 10 to 13. I hear men whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my familiar friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who test the righteous, who see the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm is taken from Psalm chapter 18, verse 2 to 3a, 3b and c to 4, 5 to 6, and 7. Our response is verses 6. In my anguish I called to the Lord, and he heard me. I love you, Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my savior. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard me. My God, my rock, where I take refuge, my shield, my saving strength, my stronghold. I cry out, praised be the Lord, and see, I am saved from my foes. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard me. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave surrounded me. The traps of death confronted me. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard me. In my anguish, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry to him reached his ears. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and he heard me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 10, verse 31 to 42. At that time, the Jews took up stones to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? The Jews answered him, 
We stone you for no good work, but for blasphemy. Because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be nullified, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Again, they tried to arrest him, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John at first baptized. And there he remained, and many came to him, and they said, John did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed in him there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We all know about the call of Jeremiah who was called from the village of Anathoth. And Jeremiah came at a very critical moment of the history of the Southern Kingdom. The Babylonians were advancing. They were threatening to invade. And Jeremiah was called to prophesy to the people about the wrong alliances that they were making, that they should be careful. And that caused a lot of enemies on Jeremiah. Jeremiah, at the beginning of his ministry, had this assurance from God that he was going to see him through. And so he went with that confidence, the confidence that is in every one of us when we decide to work for God, when we decide to do things for God. We begin with a lot of confidence, a lot of enthusiasm, very convinced that nothing will ever go on in my life. You look at yourself when you received God's call and how much fired up you were, convinced that nothing was going to touch you, nothing was going to go wrong about your life. Think of your own call to marriage, how fired up you were, the smiles that were there when you decided to get into that marriage. Then things started going wrong. Then friends started saying all sorts of things about your marriage. Then you started hearing of your spouse having a relationship there, having an affair there. It indeed can get someone into a lot of discouragement. And Jeremiah is not different from any one of us. We have all had our moments when we felt ourselves on fire at the beginning of a call and then things started happening. You start seeing things, you start hearing things, you start getting a lot of discouragement from others. And what makes things even worse is the feeling of being rejected. That feeling Jeremiah had, it is a very bad feeling, I tell you. Maybe you can relate. You have had your own moments of feeling rejected, feeling unwanted. Jeremiah had it like that. But you know what? We are learning lessons from this man on how to overcome all those feelings of frustration, of rejection, of disappointment in our lives in order to soldier on. Jeremiah sat down. If you go back to verse 7 of chapter 20, You will hear Jeremiah talking to God as a friend. He says, you have deceived me. I remember what you told me at the beginning. I remember how you told me that you were going to be with me. And I got into this ministry convinced that things were going to go well. And then I feel deceived now. You have deceived me. Or a more stronger word is You have seduced me and have allowed myself to be seduced. 
He uses such strong terms to address his God. Because that is exactly what he was going through around that time, having been put in the cells as well, having been beaten before, and now he feels discouraged, broken. But you know what? This man knows where to go to. He took the scriptures. He took the word of God and he started going through the Psalms. He took Psalm 31 verse 13. This is where we find these words. For I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. You know, the book of Psalms has a lot to do with what we go through every day. If you are going through discouragement, if you are going through brokenness, if you are going through moments of rejection, go to the Psalms as did Jeremiah. Jeremiah went to the book of Psalms. This is where we begin our reading from. I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. Again, he goes on with the Psalms. Say, oh, my familiar friends watching for my fall. Familiar friends is found in Psalms 41 verse 9. Those who ate my bread have turned against me. He's quoting from the Psalms. But then, after being encouraged by the word of God, he gets this assurance. And he's able to say, but the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not succeed. That is another assurance. The word of God is one assurance. The second assurance is the fact that God never leaves us. People may leave us. People may go against us. But one thing we have to reassure ourselves is the fact that God never abandons us. He's ever with us. He promises us in his word. I am with you always until the end of time. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. He promises Joshua, have I not commanded you that I'm with you? Be not afraid. I'm with you. Take courage. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. We see constant assurance of God in the word of God. Whenever we feel alone, go to the word of God and search for Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. He promises. is ever with you. And if you go to Isaiah 45 verse 5. Put the bookmarkers in your Bible. So that whenever you want to have an encouraging word. Regarding the fact that God is with us. God is ever with you. You have a place to find these verses. You have Isaiah 45 verse 5. Where the Lord is saying. I am the Lord and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. I equip you though you do not know me he is telling you you may not know him too well but he is there he equips you he takes care of you he is by your side and I suppose Jesus must have felt the same thing when they picked up stones to stone him it must have been a discouraging moment at that time that is why he was able to ask I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? Beginning with the wedding at Cana, the healing of the royal official's son, then the healing of a man who suffered for 38 years, then the feeding of the thousands, then the healing of a man who was born blind in chapter 9, then the raising of Lazarus that will come after this in chapter 11 said, I have done all these for you. For which of these do you want to stone me? 
Oh, Jesus, I know you understand human beings. They don't stone others for the good things. It is still happening in our time. Look at how many good things that the priests and pastors are doing for the people. Look at how the religious sisters give their lives to God, but they wait only for something to stone them. They never even appreciate. Yes, stones are always in the hands of people. They never even see the power of God at work in this. All they see is Satan. All they see is immorality. All they see are all the terrible scandals that they want to publicize, but they don't see the big work being done in the sacrifices that these people offer. Lord, teach them. Teach your servants to remain strong. Teach your servants to remain steadfast when things get tough, when stones are picked up to be thrown at them by the people. Lord, be their strength. We give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you. Thanks be to God. Come back to me.